Hi, hello. Here's another video that I've been intending to do for quite a while, a presentation about the goddess Ellen of the Ways, um, specifically focusing on the Brythonic law of Wales and Somerset. Now, the best book that I can recommend about Ellen is Finding Ellen, The Quest for Ellen of the Ways, which is a compilation of different essays compiled and edited by my friend Caroline Wise. Now I'm recording with Zoom and it does that weird disappearing trick. I've got a picture of the book that I can show further on anyway. It's weird when it does that. Look, I can disappear entirely and then reappear. Well, it's like dipping in and out of the other world. Anyway, let me just bring the PowerPoint up and I'll walk us through some interesting pictures. Takes me a little while to sort this out. I'm not brilliantly fast with it. Okay. Now, can't remember if I said already. I've known Caroline Wise since around about 1992 through the psychic questing world. And she commissioned me to do this painting a number of years ago now. I, I can't remember. I think around about 2007, 2008, maybe. Might be a bit more recent than that. My brain is not good with memory. Um, anyway, Caroline's work with Ellen of the Ways goes way, way back to the 1980s. Um, and she's actually responsible for the epithet, that's a good word, epithet of the ways. You know, it's a, it's a modern phrase that's become very popular. And when Caroline and her friend Cheska Potter, the artist, were first communicating with the Ellen of the Ways vibe, you know, um, that's how they understood it. But they also got words like the green woman or the green lady, you know, and it, back in those days, there was no internet. It was difficult to research things, finding obscure books, but slowly, over 30 years or so, Caroline has pursued Ellen as a European dear goddess going way, way back um, to the most ancient times of Northern Europe, to shamanic times in Siberia and across the steppes to Russia and so on, you know. And quite fascinatingly, uh, the word Ellen <clears throat> means dear in many, many different languages. Now here's a quickie from Caroline's book. So in Bulgarian, Macedonian, Serbian and Croatian, Ellen means deer. And in, then it changes slightly in different cultures. Lithuania, Elenas. And in Polish, Zelen. And in Russian, Olen. But they all mean deer. It's this wide expanse of... of ancestral memory of the goddess of the land, you know. Now, of the ways has many meanings to many people and, and it can be ley lines, it can be spirit paths. And, and I'm gonna show some interesting things where it can just be roads as well, you know. But that aside, this presentation is some insights to the Brythonic British Welsh uh, Somerset Ellen. Now, her story, she's a Mabinogian goddess uh, from one of the stories in the Mabinogians. So she's equal to Rhiannon, Branwen, Arianrod. You know, they're all goddesses from the Mabinogian, and so is Ellen. 
One of the Mabinogian stories is called The Dream of Maxon Chledeg. And it's a mythic story about the Romanization of the land that became Wales. This story goes back to Roman times, fourth century, before Wales was called Wales. You know, it was tribal territories, different Celtic gr groups. Anyway, you might be familiar with the story. I'm going to cut it very short. The dream of Maxon Hledek is a visionary dream that the Roman emperor has. And he's in Rome, Italy, and he dreams about a far off land and a beautiful princess. And, and he falls in love with her and must find her. You know, that's that's the simple beginning. And eventually he gets there. Now, details of the dream are interesting. First of all, he ends up in what is North Wales and he comes to a castle or a fort and he enters and he sees two youths playing a chess-like game. But this chess-like game isn't chess, although it's often translated as chess. It's a game called Gwythbwilk. And that means um, wood sense, forest sense, tree wisdom. It's a very esoteric and mysterious game. But for now, we just call it chess, you know, Gwythbwilk. Um, and by the youths playing this game, there's an old king. And he is carving chess pieces or playing pieces for this mysterious game, this, this forest sense game. And next to this old king, who's called Udaf Hen, old Ud Udaf, is his beautiful daughter, and she shines like the sun. Now, as much as Ellen can mean dear in lots of different languages, and it does in Welsh as well, E-L-A-N, Elan, means a female deer, a hind, um, but also Elin, E-L-I-N, Elin, means a ray of light or shining light. Now, here's the description from the Mabinogion of the first appearance of Elan, Elin. And he saw a maiden sitting before him in a chair of gold. Not more easy than to gaze upon the sun. When brightest was it to look upon her by reason of her beauty. So she's shining like the sun, and her name means a ray of light. A vest of white silk was upon the maiden, with clasps of red gold at the breast, and a surcoat of gold tissue upon her, and a frontlet of red gold upon her head. And rubies and gems were in that frontlet, alternating with pearls and imperial stones. <clears throat> and a girdle of ruddy gold was around her. She was the fairest sight that men had ever beheld. Now, that's the story in a Mabinogion. Quite obviously, as the story unfolds, she is a sovereignty figure. You know, the Roman emperor has to marry her if he wants to claim the land of what will eventually be called Wales, you know? <clears throat> and there's a whole marriage agreement that, that goes along with that, which I'll explain. But just quickly, in Welsh, Ellen means a shining light. And in Irish, Eileen means a shining light. And in French, Elaine means a shining light. And in Greek, Ellen means a ray of sunlight, you know? So she's... Ellen can mean dear, but it's also this shining golden light. A good friend of mine, Debbie Cartwright, um, another questing friend, described Ellen once as the brightness of sunlight reflected on water. 
and that's always stuck with me it's a beautiful brilliance uh, of light you know so this shining light and i often say the light of the land is this ellen almost like um titania in a midsummer night's dream now if you think of the druidic symbol the arwen the three rays of light that's three ellens it's a triple ellen is the arwen three beams of light you know and this threefold ellen idea will become quite significant further on well just get my notes what's the next picture okay so wales before wales was called wales was different tribal territories you know up in the north you've got the tribe called i don't know how you pronounce it really the ordobeses and then further in the south the demite and then to the east the Siluras. you know it's three different main big tribal groups really so anyway when ellen agrees to marry the em marry the emperor of rome she has a wedding gift um demand you know uh, and that is the emperor builds her these three big cities towns you know and there's one for each of these tribal territories so in the north is Carnarvon, which in roman times was called sagontium Carnarvon. so sagontium Carnarvon is where ellen and her father lived in the story in the Mabinogion. And to the southwest, there's Carmarthen, which is now famous as the legendary birthplace of Merlin, the wizard, the so Carmarthen, but its Roman name was Moridunum, the fort of the sea, the sea fort, Moridunum. And to the east, there's Isca. Isca is now known as Caerleon fort of the legions Caerleon you know so the Roman emperor built these three towns for Ellen as a kind of wedding gift an interesting thing with these three Roman towns is all three of them or oh, his 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 um this is the amphitheater at Caerleon Isca Caerleon the impact on Rome, on British, Britonic, Celtic culture, massive. Um, when you get to King Arthur and Merlin and Taliesin, they're descended from these Romanized Britons, you know. This is an artist's impression of Carmarthen. This all existed before Merlin was born. And here's another artist impression. This is Carnarvon. This is Sagontium in the north. This is where Ellen and her chess piece making father lived, you know. Now, all three of these towns, cities, towns, had Mithraeums. We know this from archaeology. And the important thing with that is that with Mithraeums, which are kind of a Persian mystery cult that the legionaries liked, heavily influenced by star law and occult esoteric mystery traditions based on star law. So this kind of star law of Mithraic things um, is an esoteric influence behind the early medieval bardic tradition of Wales, you know. So when you get to the story of Ceredwen and Taliesin and she's stirring her cauldron according to the books of the astrologers and it's all loaded with star law, it's inherited from the Roman times. The Zodiac was there in the fourth century, at least, with all of these Mithraic intrigues. And there were other mystery cults too at the same time. Now, this picture from the Mithraic things is a famous bull slaying scene. This is a big male figure, Mithra, slaying the bull. But it's exactly the same in the middle of the Gundestrup cauldron. Think about that. 
one's a Roman culture, the other is a mysterious culture found in Denmark, could have been treasure hoard from somewhere else. So we don't know where it came from for certain. But at the very base of the bowl is this bull, its horns are missing. And above the bull, there's a figure stabbing it. And below the bull, there's the hound. You know, so it's a, a man or a person with a sword and a hound attacking the bull, just like there's a man here attacking the bull. And it's old star law of the winter hexagon. It's the hunter and hound attacking Taurus the bull. Star law mysteries. Anyway, they're just their influences in Ellen's Roman kingdom. Now, Paul Caroline Wise, she had criticism in the 1980s when, when the artist Cheska Potter was drawing antlered goddesses and people saying there's no such thing as an antlered goddess, you're making it all up and, and it's not true. This figurine is Romano-Celtic as well, contemporary with Ellen's cities, not found in Wales but found in northern France, not that far away actually, you know, but it's of the same era and it's of the same Romano-Celtic culture of the third century and fourth century, you know? So antelope goddesses were a thing in the Romanized Celtic world. Now, as well as building three towns for Ellen as part of his marriage agreement, he also the Roman emperor also had to construct roads, Roman roads connecting these three towns. Now these Roman roads, um, you can see they crisscross all over Wales and they connect to the three cities and they're called San Ellen, Ellen's roads. And a lot of them still exist. Now these roads are actually much older than Roman times, they're, they're very old track trackways um but the romans probably did reinforce them uh being the excellent core engineers that they are you know so the the celtic trackway might have been a bit more humble and then the romans have made them super roads cobbled them with stones and and so on you know but these roads connect ellen's three cities throughout Wales and they're still called Ellen's Roads or Ellen's Causeways. Now here's a magical thing then you know and this isn't in the Mabinogion so the Mabinogion says that the Roman Emperor builds Ellen these three towns but if you've got that little bit of information, you can do some landscape geometry. Um, so if you do a triangle between the three cities of Ellen and find the exact center of that triangle, you'll come to a place in the middle called Elenith, which literally translates as Ellen's land. And it's a known thing. Here's a book I found on the internet. There's a book of photographs by Anthony Griffiths. Um, but his subtitle is The Ancient Heartland of the Cambrian Mountains. And that's what it is. You know, the, the center, the very heart center of Wales is the Cambrian Mountains. And Elenith is the heart center of those mountains. So right in the center point, in the midpoint of those three Roman towns is an area named Ellen, you know, and from Ellen's land, there is a river that flows and it's called the Afon Elan, which Afon just means river, the Elan, E-L-A-N, which is a female deer. So from Ellen's land in the heart of Wales flows the river of the female deer, the river Ellen. Works its way from Elenith 
gradually to the River Wye and then out into the River Severn and the Sabrina Sea. But before it gets there, it does some quite amazing things. The River Ellen or the Afon Elan um, creates the Elan Valley. It's a beautiful, wonderful landscape. And in the 1800s, they created various dams and reservoirs. The Ellen Valley Reservoirs are astounding works of Victorian brilliance, aren't they? You know, incredible stone workship. But the most amazing thing is that from these reservoirs, there's a Victorian aqueduct that takes fresh drinking water, 73 miles, 73 miles purely by gravity, gradually getting down, down, down. The water just flows to Birmingham in the center of the Midlands. Now, obviously the Midlands is the middle of England, you know, and Birmingham is its main city, you know. So that's quite amazing, you know, from the very heart center of Wales to the very heart centre of England, the waters of Ellen flow to the Ellen Valley, to the Ellen Reservoirs on the Ellen Valley Aqueduct to Birmingham. Now, coming to Somerset as well, at the top left-hand corner, you'll see Ker Leon Iska, that's her one of Ellen's three Roman cities. So you can see how close Somerset is to that Welsh landscape of Ellen. Now, Aquasulis, Bath, these are Roman roads, these red roads, and goes to Abona Sea Mills, and then you would have crossed the river into the land that became known as Wales, uh, to Kelion, uh, Isca, and so on. But I want to draw our attention closer to Glastonbury and the Somerset levels and this great forest in the bottom right hand corner. So three Roman temples then, um, at Lamiot Beacon on the bottom right hand corner, Glastonbury Tor in the middle, and then in the top left hand corner, Breen Down. You know, and what connects them is this river brew. The river brew connects these Romano Celtic pagan temples. Now, the importance of them is this you know, the, the, uh, I'll come back to that. that there is archaeological evidence for what I'm saying. Now, um, Lamia Beacon, the site of the pagan temple there archaeologists found buried many sets of antlers. So many, in fact, that it led the academic archaeologists to conclude that the temple probably was dedicated to a Canunus type hunter god. It's interesting, you know, um, but antlers At the far end of the River Brew, and the River Brew doesn't flow to Breen Down anymore because the monks of Glastonbury Abbey diverted it. And it now flows out to sea near Burnham on sea, further south down the coastline. But in Roman times and, and in Dark Age times, the River Brew flowed from Lamia Beacon to Glastonbury Tor to Breen Down. And at Breen Down, at the pagan temple, of Printown, they also found buried antlers, like at Lamia Beacon, much to the suggestion that maybe the River Brew and its temples belong to some sort of deer cult. Fascinating idea. And at Breen Down, they have found nothing to do with these Roman temples, they have found many bones of reindeer dating back to 12,000 BC. So Ice Age. So even in Ice Age times, there were 
reindeer deposits being left at Breen Down. But anyway, these, these Romano-Celtic temples have these buried antlers everywhere. Not on Glastonbury Tor, but Lamiat Beacon and Breen Down, as if it's following the River Brew. Now, um, back in the 1980s, when Caroline Wise and Cheska Potter were working with the Ellen inspiration, a, a recurring title name, they also just got the Green Lady or the Green Woman would, you know, it's like the, the divine feminine of nature, the divine feminine of the forests and the animals of the forests and the trees of the forests. And that's quite interesting when you think of Ellen's father making pieces for this chess-like game called Wood Sense, Forest Sense, Forest Wisdom, you know, that his daughter is possibly connected with the forests like a green woman and the land in some way. This stayed on my mind, um, especially when I was researching the Roman temples of Somerset, because a recurring thing came to my awareness was yew tree groves. Uh, there's yew trees at Chalice Well. Archaeologist Philip Ratz uh, makes an observation of them and says that they were sacred to Hecate, the triple goddess of ancient Greece. And there's a Roman temple at Pagan's Hill, which has a yew grove. And in the heart of the Glastonbury Zodiac area at Parkwood, there's a yew grove. And there's some ancient yew trees here and there, like at Compton, Dundon, and so on. So I, I got to thinking, who, who would Hecate be in Brythonic Celtic law? Who, who would be the Celtic Hecate or Hecate, you know? And the obvious... European wide kind of deity that jumped out to me was Nematona. Nematona is actually in the Somerset area because they're in Bath, Aquasulis. Um, there is an inscription to her. So she was certainly known in the area. Now, Nematona simply means she of the sacred grove. So it's not really a name, it's like a title, it's just She of the Grove, She of the Sacred Grove is Nematona. Now, Hecate is Greek, but to the Romans, she was known as Diana Triformis. An interesting thought then, because she's this three-faced figure, this three three and one which is very celtic you know there's a triple bridget and a triple morrigan and there's three guinevere's you know so three a triple goddess is perfectly acceptable to irish and brythonic celts you know but the romans didn't call her hecate they called her diana triformis and the hecate statues hecate statues and diana triformis statues were often at crossroads or three ways like three roads coming together to go off in three different directions so another name for diana Di diana triformis is diana trivia it's spelt like trivia it's just a bad accident really trivia but trivia via means way as in root you know, so trivia means three three ways, three roots. And that's really interesting. Because when we come back to Wales, and you've got your three cities of Ellen, and Ellen in the middle, connected by Roman roads, then there are three main directions to Carnarvon, to Carmarthen, to Caerleon. So Ellen indirectly is a goddess of three ways to her three main power centers, if you like, you know. So she's, you know, the Druid, Druidic Arwen is three rays of light, three Ellens. But from Elenif, the heart of the land that would be called Wales, Trivere, Ellen, three ways, three roads, three directions, three cities. Now, um, 
an interesting thing with Diana herself then is she is usually almost always depicted with deer you know it's quite a recurring thing this is a standard kind of statue Diana and a small roe deer Diana with a stag you know wherever there were in Europe Italy and so on most famous grove to Diana was the Lake Nemi, Nemi. It's the same Nemi as Nematona, you know, it's the, the grove of Diana, and all the Diana shrines were surrounded with deer's antlers. So Diana is this deer goddess as well. Although she's often described as a huntress, but you know, she's a protector of the forest, protector of the animals of the forest. Back to our Somerset area then this is an old map if you look in the middle it says the isle of avalon and in the top left hand corner it says bry that's the river brew um so it's that river brew that has the roman temples on it with the stag's antlers buried you know but here in the bottom right hand side depicted on the map from poly Albion in 1620s is a diana figure you know, that she is the biggest thing in the area, bigger than all the other characters on the map, that there is this Artemis or Diana um, protector of the forests there, which all relates to an area called the Great Forest. And um, the main place today in the modern world of the Great Forest is Stourhead. And even in the Pantheon at Stourhead, there's a statue of Diana, you know, so it's like this Diana Triformis, Diana Trivia, the, this protector of the woods, this deer related goddess is ever present throughout history in this area of Somerset, though not called Ellen, um, but an aspect of Ellen or an aspect of Nematona. Now, so here's Caroline's book. If you're interested in 30 years of research and, and all of the old deer goddess lore that goes way back to Northern European shamanic traditions, you need to get a copy of this book. And if you're interested in the Romano-Celtic pagan temples and some of the pagan mysticism of the Romano-Celtic era of Somerset, you want to get this book as well. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope you found that interesting. And um, yeah, not many people seem to be aware of Eleneth and the heart of Wales, you know, and the Ellen Valley. Very, very special, you know the goddess of the land, the light of the land, keeps showing herself every decade, you know.